Now, Darren, it's popular now to bring back the cloud to the edge. Kind of a hybrid implementation. Yeah, it just makes sense for low latency and all of those things. Now, bringing Microsoft hardware into your data center that used to be limited to Azure Stack. But that was a pretty big investment, and you'll certainly need a lot of room. There's a new option, and that's what we're talking about on this episode of Dev Radio. <laughs> Hey, and welcome to the next episode of Microsoft Dev Radio. I'm your host, Jerry. I'm here with Darren. Hi, Darren. Hello. And we got Andrew on. Andrew, thanks for being on the call today. Thanks for having me. Now, Andrew, we're going to talk about Databox Edge, but before we talk about that, let's talk about you. Tell us who you are. So I'm a program manager in the Azure Storage Media and Edge team, and I'm working in the, the Databox organization, which is a peer to Azure Stack, where we're building a bunch of first-party Microsoft hardware. First party Microsoft hardware. Now the the Microsoft hardware in this data storage world, it started quite a long time ago. You had kind of tell us how we got here. Yeah, it started out with Microsoft acquiring Store Simple probably seven or so years ago. Um, and that was an on-prem NAS type solution that allowed you to do backups and tier your data to the cloud. Um, that group was part of server originally and then has moved into Azure Storage, uh, I want to say like two or three years ago now, and sort of got the charter of making it easier for people to migrate their data into Azure. And so start off by building Databox. There's also Databox Disk and Databox Heavy, which are different sizes of those transport appliances. Yeah. And so depending on how much data you have to transfer, you can get one of these shipped to you, copy your data onto it, and ship it back to a data center where it gets loaded into your storage account. So it's and data transfer via idea, UPS. The idea is kind of like an airplane lands, and they've got so <laughs> they've got a terabyte of telemetry, and you could either upload that to Azure or yep. you could put it in a data box. And, yes. and then how's the box get to Azure? A UPS truck. Oh, of course. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I mean, that's... Yes, obviously. You upload it. Um, yeah, so... so if you don't have the bandwidth for the amount of data you need to transfer, you can get one of these devices, copy your data on, and ship it back and forth. That's incredible. I had no clue that that existed. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, and, it's, and it's important for a lot of customers who have so much data, and it would right. basically you would saturate their bandwidth if you didn't yes. do it this way. Yes. And, yeah. and even that follows the standard Azure, everything's by subscription. Yes. So uh, this, this one's a little different. It's more job-based. So for a data box, you get it for 10 days in the subscription fee or the, the job fee. And then if you don't return it in time, it's an extra fee per day, kind of like, you know, I'll date myself here, Blockbuster Video. It's like Blockbuster Video. <laughs> You're a copy of Dirty Dancing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, with Blockbuster Video, you could always slide it through the door and say, hey, I returned it. <laughs> yes, yeah, you do it on a right. Saturday at night. Right. right. Yeah. The, yeah. And, and we, there's even a little thumb drive one there. I mean, it, it, there's a whole scale of things. And yeah, it, the, what's Databox the super big one called? Uh, Databox Heavy. That's a heavy. petabyte. Petabyte. Yeah. Love that. A, a, a petabyte and of this, data is really heavy. It's like <laughs> a small, yes, it's over 500 pounds. It's like a small filing cabinet on wheels. It's 500 pounds. Yeah, it's a lot of disk. Yeah, that, that one's a lot of disk redundancy in there. <laughs> yeah, that one technically does not go UPS truck because it's too big for a UPS truck. It goes freight. <laughs> yeah, you imagine the guy trying to pick it up. <laughs> uh, That's right. It, yeah. it, it, on the side, it says teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> two, Makes the dream work. Two guys pull it. To, that's exactly right. But, all right, so that's yes. that. that we call that data box, but yes. we're talking about data box edge, and yes. it sounds like it's it's another storage device, but... But it's different. So yes, those are those are we consider those the offline data transfer devices. And then my team's working on a couple of online transfer solutions. So we have Databox Gateway, which is a virtual appliance that is essentially a VM you stand up as a storage gateway. And we also are building Databox Edge, which is a first party Microsoft device. That's a one U rack mount server. And you put this in your location where you're generating data, transfer your data to it, and it, that we have the same gateway in there as a storage gateway. It uploads it over the network to Azure Storage for you. 
So the storage yeah. gateway, just to be super clear, is that's just software. You just install yes. that on a on a server that you already have yeah. going. Running Hyper-V or VMware, it's a virtual machine. You stand it up and you can start transferring data. So rather than having to you know figure out the right set of AZ copy commands or whatever tool you want and managing your internet connection, it abstracts all that away from you. So you know if your bandwidth slows down or your connection drops, whatever, all the retries it handles for you. And I manage that software in Azure, not locally. Yes, yes, it's all cloud managed. So you stand it up as a VM, and then everything else is done through the Azure portal for activating it, setting up shares on it, setting user permissions. So we've had the we've had physical hard drives. We've got a piece of software that works kind of like Store Simple in a way, where it just manages this this transfer. But now DataBox Edge, this is a, is it one U or two U's? It's one U. Is a 1U, and it's not meant just for storage. No. So the reason it has the Edge name on there is we also have compute on the device. So we uh, have the ability to, from the cloud, you can push containers down to it, and you can have run containers on the device, so you can do cloud-managed Edge compute. And so that can either be standalone things you want to run at the Edge and manage from the cloud, or it could be things that you want to act on the data coming into the device. You know, if you have lots of IoT sensors out in your environment and you don't have enough bandwidth to transfer all the data, you can have a container running on there, reviewing all the data and deciding what are the important pieces to send to the cloud and discarding the rest. So maybe you want to just send anomaly readings and normal readings. You don't have the bandwidth to send all that data. You just transfer the anomalies to the cloud. So that was a question I was going to have was, um, you know, the edge term is appearing more and more frequently when uh, Microsoft is talking about distributed computing and so on. Yes. And so I, I, I was trying to understand, okay, where does this sit in the IoT continuum? And you just kind of address that by saying, you know, it's effectively an IoT edge runtime. Is it exclusively yes. for IoT edge or are there other alternatives that you can leverage for uh, deploying mm -hmm. capabilities to the uh, data box edge? So for Databox Edge, we actually have, to your point, the Azure IoT Edge runtime in there. You know, they built a great framework for deploying containers, updating those, you know, securely and all that. So we just include that in the device. And so that gives us some advantages in that you can run Azure ML, Azure Functions, Azure Stream Analytics, mm -hmm. um, Azure Cognitive Services. Those all have Edge versions of those that you can push down to the device and use for processing data. Um, or you can run any container. I mean, we support any Linux container you want to run. So you can write your own code and just run it on the device. You're the using IoT Edge to deploy it. Is still edge. Yeah, right. Your container management is still Edge, but it, it can run any anything you containerize and run as an, an IoT or as a Linux container. Right. And you, you don't have to use the Azure container repository or any of the IoT Edge modules. You can point to your own container repository and deploy your container from there. Okay, that, so that makes sense because so that kind of ties together the idea that uh, your data box to a certain extent is helping you to manage more effectively your bandwidth to the cloud. Yes. And so incorporating the edge runtime allows you to do, th as you've mentioned, analytics and so on and so forth to perhaps consolidate and compress the amount of data that will be streamed across up into the IoT hub centrally. Yes, so, so you could be also calling into other systems in your environment. So like if those anomaly readings are in your factory and the robot's overheating on your manufacturing line, that container can also call the system to shut that robot off. So it's not just about transferring data, it's interacting with other things. You know, in safety and security scenarios, you can do ML inferencing on videos or images and, you know, let the, you know, the guard know there's a truck at the loading dock at midnight when not, that's not supposed to be there, you know, go investigate that and still be sending some, either all the data if you have enough bandwidth or some subset for further analytics or processing or long-term storage. You know, if you have compliance reasons, you need to store things in the cloud for an extended period. Now, and, okay, so with all the things I can do and all the cognitive services I can bring down as containers and my custom containers, there might be a little bit of a concern now that maybe I'm, how soon will I overwhelm the compute capacity of this device? What kind of compute capacity does it have? So the device has, um, two CPUs with 10 cores each, uh, 128 gigabytes of RAM, and the other thing in the device is also the Brainwave FPGA. That's right. So, so it's the same FPGA that's deployed in the Azure data center. So if you're doing ML inferencing, you, know, you can build and train your models in the cloud and use Azure ML to run that model using the same hardware acceleration at the edge that you would get in Azure. So if I'm trying to find that truck that shows up and I, that, that algorithm is relatively complicated and relatively expensive, I can hand it off to this dedicated chipset that does it really effectively for me. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, allow okay. me to scale, especially if I have many, many back doors and I want to check them all. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, the number of cameras and the resolution of the cameras and like you said, the model you're running and all that have impact on that. So depending on the environment, we'll really determine the number of cameras and things you can process with a single device. So I need to have my own rack. My rack has to be in place. My power supply and all that sort of thing has to be in place. Yes. Then I just slide this in and it's ready to go. Do, uh -huh. is, is it a, a use case that you guys support or anticipate where I would slide two in, in into the same rack because I've got such a heavy workload or something like that? You can have multiple in, in a rack. You know, we are working with some customers that are sort of dividing up their workloads and having some cameras on, you know, one device and running some in-store processing on another device. So, yes, you can have multiple devices and, it, you know, eventually we'll probably support clustering and being able to do things across multiple devices. Right now they are separate devices. Um, you know, your container is running on those. You could write your code such that your containers are communicating across devices if you wanted to. Sure, sure. So, so one of the things that I'm interested about this scenario is obviously um, we've evangelized the cloud for a long time in terms of, you know, you're offloading your administrative cycles up into a single consistent interface. You're not having to worry about hardware obsolescence and so on and so forth. Right. Yet here we are talking about putting um, hardware locally. What's What's incorporated in this program to help mitigate hardware obsolescence and those types of things? Hmm. So that's a great question and ties into our business model. So basically, we're offering this as a subscription. So you subscribe to the Databox Edge service. It's $695 a month, and that includes the piece of hardware. So you don't have to go out and buy a piece of hardware and do a big CapEx purchase up front. This shows up on your Azure bill monthly as an OpEx fee. And when you're done with that, you you know if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason or that program's ended, you can send it back to Microsoft. You're not locked into that for a period. And you know, with the with as quickly as edge computing is changing, you know, we're going to iterate on this hardware and come out with you know new capabilities. You know, who knows what's beyond FPGAs? There's another device. If you need that, you can trade in your device for what the latest version is. That's pretty so, attractive, I, yeah. especially switching over to OpEx for my business. And yeah. I can think about things like I can get up to speed or started quickly where I can say, yes. let's turn this on. Right. And then what, what do you anticipate is the gap between I'll take it to I've got it in my hands ready to start plugging it in? Um, right now, we are getting devices out in about a week. So... So I can get started faster quickly. than I can hire a developer. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a yeah. big deal. Now, what about management? Am I going to need a, a local guy now managing everything, or is it back up into Azure? It, it's an appliance, and it's all cloud managed. So basically, when you get the device, it's very much like setting up a home Wi-Fi router. You plug it in, plug in networking, and then you connect to a well-known IP address where you do your IP configuration. You get an activation key from the Azure portal put it into the local web UI on the device, and then everything else is done from the cloud. And that's appealing to a lot of customers, I know, because having a fully capable edge device allows them to have an offline scenario if they have unreliable bandwidth or unreliable connectivity. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so is, a, is there just one, or do I pick the, the one based on my size? I have a, I have a medium-sized uh, store, and so I pick the Databox Edge that's si right size for me, or how does it, how do uh, we set it apart? Right, right now there is only one device. So you, okay. you get a choice, either the, the virtual appliance if you just want to move data, or Databox Edge if you have data and compute requirements. Yeah, and I mean, it's important to say that everybody gets the Cadillac basically at this yes. time, right? We, well, we don't have, we don't yeah. have the, the escort right. version yet. <laughs> Yeah, and the you know you asked about the compute capabilities on the storage side. It is all 12 terabytes of NVMe storage, so it's all SSD, very fast, That's lightning fast. Yeah, it has four 25 gig network ports. So if you're in a high bandwidth environment or have a fast connection to the cloud, it can really move data quickly for you as well. Well, and let's just be honest. This is probably going to be the nicest thing in most data centers. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty high end server. For it's six hundred ninety-five dollars a month. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. high-end server. That's yeah, exactly I was just trying it. to think. Yeah, you know, how much Fortnite could you run on it? <laughs> how many, how many could it? Yeah, exactly. Yes. The let, let me let me ask you a little bit about a, a customer concern. So mm -hmm. I have a device like this, and something could go wrong. I know I manage everything up in the cloud. I know I don't really need to have on-premises guys anymore, right? And so I have a, a little rack in the back. I keep it all the right temperature, give it all the right, but something goes wrong because hardware goes wrong. Do I need what? What's our plan? What do we say to customers who are like, "What do we do now?" 
That, that fee includes hardware support. Your monthly subscription fee, you call Microsoft support. So, you know, one person to contact either software or hardware issues. You know, if support identifies a hardware problem, they'll send somebody out with a replacement component or a full new device to replace it next business day. Next business day. And is there a, is some of this proactive as well? Because we can monitor everything remotely. Yes. There, there's, so as I mentioned, for setting it up, there's a local web UI. So you cannot log into the device locally. You can't terminal server into the device or do any of that. There's a web UI. You can do some hardware checks through that UI. And then there's also, because it's cloud connected, it's sending telemetry back to the cloud. So, you know, if there's device failures and things happening, you'll get alerts in the, in the Azure portal. When I'm yeah. using um, Databox Edge, I'm using IoT Edge uh, on, oh. as the manager of all of my containers. And yes. then there, the future of IoT Edge, as it grows, and uh, how do I get updates down to Databox Edge then? Because I see all those changes, and I want right. to be able to control that. You know, I mean, my business is, you know, it's only from nine to five, let's say, you know, but between right. those hours, I can't have right. updates going on. What What's right. your story? So there, there are no automatic updates, so it won't magically reboot during the day or during <laughs> when you don't want it to. Um, you get notified in the Azure portal that there's a new update for Databox Edge. And essentially, that's one update package that has um, the host OS, the storage gateway updates, and all the Databox Edge functionality, as well as um, the Linux VM we're running IoT Edge in and IoT Edge. So it's one package with everything. You download that and then tell, it, tell the device when to apply it. Got it. Okay. And, and when you say apply it, it's actually pretty special. This it, is an unusual approach. Yes, it is. We, we do boot it's like from Xbox. VHD. This is how yeah. Xbox does it. Yes, we do boot from VHD on the device, and we're actually swapping images. Back to Fortnite. Just Back like, to Fortnite. Just like Xbox. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. right. It, so as my it, as my store now has this, and I'm you know maybe I'm in a somewhat re remote location, so I have difficult connectivity. This is the answer I've been looking for all along because right. everything keeps rolling, and then I can. It, it is still a storage device is what's nice. So as right. I have this information, I need to queue it up and different things like that. Right. I, can, I can still drop them in there and they're sitting there waiting to go up whenever connectivity returns. Exactly. Yes. And sort of related to that on the update side, you know, if you have that poor connectivity, you can have it download the update. And then once it's done downloading, decide when to apply and reboot. So that gives you your very predictable sort of SLA yes. that you know, right. okay, it's, it takes 15 minutes to flash the uh, the new OS on or whatever it's going to be, and you yep. can have that manage that window very tightly. Yes, yeah, get it all downloaded, and then we'll let you know it's downloaded and ready to apply, and then you can tell it, you know, in your time window. Um, and then yes, similar thing on the data side, your incoming data as connectivity is available, will transfer it the data. Yep. Um, by default, you know, you sort of referenced Store Simple earlier. You know, it's different from Store Simple in that it doesn't tier the data through, you know, um, SSD spinning media and then to the cloud. As soon as data lands on Databox Edge or in the storage gateway and there's connectivity, we start trying to transfer it. So it is really about data transfer, not lo having lo a bunch of local storage. Yeah, although there is a cache, right? There is a cache, yes. So the most recently transferred data will be available locally. But you know, it's not meant as a general purpose file server. You know, it's not the kind of device you'd create the shares and give it to your information workers to be creating office docs and things like that. Not for six ninety nine a month, you're not. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> and you know, with all those auto saves and stuff, we're gonna keep uploading stuff continuously throughout the day. And, you know, that might strain your bandwidth a little. Uh, talk to me talk to me philosophically just for a second. Mm -hmm. Why is it that customers want hardware branded by Microsoft? Because um, they, they like the ability to uh, know the hardware has been optimized for the scenario they're trying to use it for. You know, we worked to optimize the storage and configure the storage appropriately for what we needed, as well as the compute, the ability to add the FPGA in there, um, and then having one, one company to call if something goes wrong, rather than, you know, calling the hardware company, blaming the software, the software company blaming the hardware. You go to one one support person and can't help one you. One neck to ring, one throat to chest. Exactly. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. Well, that, that's interesting because to a certain extent, that's a similar value proposition to the Microsoft Store uh, selling you know, laptop equipment and so on and so forth is you can be a lot more confident that there isn't um, malicious software that's installed on there that's taking CPU cycles and those types of things. All of those um, support APIs that are plugged in there that are sending telemetry out to goodness knows where. So, yeah, I could see that's a major trust factor for an organization.
Remember, yeah. remember Gateway yeah. 2000? Uh-huh. With a cow? Yeah. 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 All this stuff, they would, it would install your whole hard drive be full but by the time you got yeah. a brand new machine. Yes. Yeah, and, and related to that is, you know, we've done a bunch of things with the device as well and what the software running on there. So, you know, if somebody were to open up and reconfigure the hardware, we detect that on boot and won't fail to boot. So, you know, oh, people that's can't, cool. yeah, that's what it, yeah. So it's very, the software is very tuned and aligned with the, the hardware. So I'm sure it's also using some trusted platform modules as well to manage yes. keys for encryption yes. and all those sorts of things. Uh-huh. Exactly. TPM's in there. We do all that sort of stuff. There, there's actually, in addition to, you know, changing the hardware, there's also a sensor in there. So if somebody opens the case, we know somebody's tampered with the, with the case. Perfect. Now, let's see. Uh, this has been available since March. In, end of March. We cheated March 26th. So it is available. Mm-hmm. You can go to the Azure portal today and either download the VM or place your subscription order for a Databox Edge device. And if I only need a, a, a box for six months, that's cool, too. That's the way the subscription works. That's the way it works, yes, exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, yes. prior to that, of course, it was a private preview for a lot of customers. How, oh. how, have, how have you seen customers respond to this? Um, customers have responded very positively. Um, they really like the cloud managed aspect of it, um, especially with the ability to do edge compute. That's really where more of the customers have been using the device. Um, and a lot of it has not been you know, transferring a lot of data. It's really about, I want to push containers down and be able to manage them from the cloud, running the same code I'm running in the cloud out of that edge place that doesn't have the bandwidth you know, to be a well cloud connected. Yeah, so I was going to ask a question about that in reality. Uh, so you started off with Databox. You kind of extended Databox to incorporate Edge. Is there going to be just an Edge appliance that really sort of takes to the other end of the spectrum, or is, do you concede that the, uh, the Databox Edge is really going to be that one solution? Um, so you're, you're asking like a Databox Edge device with less storage. Less uh, data, more edge. Less data, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I almost said. Um, potentially. I mean, that's definitely, we're getting an ask. Lots, you know, lots of customers are interested in this, you know, retail stores, other things where maybe the one new form factor isn't a great fit. So we're looking at um, different form factors we might be able to provide, different amounts of storage and compute and acceleration and things like that. So yeah, we're doing a lot of data collection around that now. So if anybody has feedback, they can certainly reach out and let us know. Yeah, for That's sure. Awesome. Now, uh, Andrew, you and I were actually on a project using this, and I oh. know the customer was delighted. But um, let me ask you, in, in the future of Databox Edge, do you anticipate um, us providing a, a kind of service that is more than the U, but also the rack? Uh, you mean like, like a, an Azure like Stack kind thing. of solution where you yeah, get like the whole whole thing. Yeah. a like half a rack of power. Databox Edge devices? Um, that's not something we're considering right now. No. Okay, that's good. I, that's a, it. It just seems like that little piece, but it's such an easy piece at the same time. So I just I was wondering if there was going to be a full like give you a baby stack. I guess is what it would be, right? Right. Yeah. Not not something we're planning at this point. No. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, when the have you seen customers using it in a way you didn't expect them to do it? Um. We didn't expect them. Uh, yeah, I guess we were initially, you know, to the Databox Edge name, we thought there would be more more customers using it for pre-processing of data, whereas we're seeing a lot more customers just using it. I want to do that at the edge. I don't care about keeping the data, in fact. And you just know, throw it away. A lot of ML inferencing where, you know, once I get the results, I, I don't need the, the data anymore. I'm just going to discard it and never store it locally or send it to the cloud. You're, so you're destroying the Azure business model is what it sounds like. <laughs> I don't know that we're destroying the Azure business model. You know, <laughs> still, <Rebind. you> still, <laughs> yeah, don't get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> you still need to train your ML models and do all that sort of stuff. And, you know, while Databox Edge has a lot of capabilities, it's not the, the power to train ML models and things like that. So It, it is part, an interesting thing, though, is part of that cycle, as I was kind of alluding to before, you know, where we start off with uh, the very powerful desktop machine, then we turn around and say, well, that becomes really hard to manage, so we want to centralize into local servers and so on. Then that's, as the organizations get bigger, you have more and more of that burden, sort of right. managing mm-hmm. those who you move to the cloud, but then all of a sudden you need this immediacy of response. Right. You need to be able to uh, afford the data transfer to mm-hmm. and from the cloud and the latency right. that's inherent in loop moving large volumes. So you start to sort of delegate some of that back out to the edge again. It's a very interesting cycle we go through. It's, it's yes, it's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. 
you know, with IoT and the explosion of devices outside of data centers, you know, there's lots of data being generated that can't be generated in the cloud because it's about the real world. So you've yeah. got to be able to process it out there and decide what's important based on your bandwidth that maybe you do want to send to the cloud or maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. When it, it's fascinating to me how much the uh, how much the developer can do now that's yes. in the cloud and it's not, and it's all sitting there locally in the first place. And you know what? There's a there's kind of a win here because when I'm in Azure and I'm executing even a small serverless function, even that has a certain cost to it. And when I bring it down to edge, I don't think I don't think like that anymore and I can right. just rush into it. And that but it doesn't mean I can scale. It doesn't mean I can do all these big data things that I want to be able to do. I still push to the cloud. I just now it's maybe it's less of a cycle, it's more of a like a, I don't know, we're spreading the peanut butter all the way across the bread now, and we're just realizing right. that there's not just one solution, but there's a lot of different solutions as well. Yeah, right. I, I've done a fair amount of work in the IoT space, and uh, seeing a lot of the, um, the the communication challenges that exist because you have a lot of legacy locations that are really connected right. using telephony, and right. so their data bandwidth and latency there is pretty high, mm -hmm. and so but they now have this proliferation of devices, as you say, that's generating megabytes of information per second that they want to do something intelligent with it, but they can't afford to rewire every single re right. remote location. So this yeah. really is the sort of the new frontier, I think, of leveraging the cloud, but delegating execution. Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. And my example earlier was, you know, just sending the anomalies. But, you know, in an environment like that, maybe you average the data over a certain period of time, and then you can upload those averages and use that when you combine with all your locations to do deep analytics in the cloud and things like that. Yeah, yeah there's a wide variety of things that can be done here. Uh, let's go back to the scenario of the update just for a second. So um, I get down the I get down the fresh update from Azure, and it will be, you know, version next. But I have a lot of containers and I have a lot of things that are custom in there as well. So when that flashes over to the version next for me, how do my customizations flow? Your configuration is stored in the cloud for your containers and things, and those will all come over. That's how it, just like it does for IoT Edge. Yep, just like IoT Edge. Yep. Got it. Well, this is a pretty cool device, to be honest. Yep. And it kind of meets the needs of a lot of customers who, I mean, we have this flashable chipset that we have. Honestly, is the differentiator between the hard, yes. the, the server that I can go buy, which is neat and all, and it basically I could buy the identical server, I suppose, right? But I don't have that, and I also don't have right. this manageability in the cloud, and I also don't have this kind of Microsoft SLA behind the whole thing. Right. Exactly. And the, the way we've implemented this is, as I mentioned, we have the storage gateway, we have IoT Edge in there. You know, data can, because it is IoT Edge, IoT sensor data can be coming into IoT Edge. It can be using the local storage to transfer stuff as files versus right. you know, sending it as IoT messages. And we have also integrated the storage gateway with IoT Edge. So you don't have to write code to monitor the file system. We will we send events into IoT Edge as new files land on the device for you to just start processing them. It's just another upload channel, basically. Right. Yeah. So you've got that all sort of integrated and intertwined in this device. You don't have to build a lot of those pieces yourself on your own hardware and manage your own hardware. And then it is all cloud managed in a subscription. And so that way you can you just create the routes up in right. IoT Hub and analytics yeah. services to direct yeah. it wherever you want it to go. You focus on building the, the piece that is your IP and the core to your business on how to process and manage that data and not worry about the rest of it. We provide a platform for you. Andrew, I'm so glad we're talking about this because I feel like I feel like the solution is hidden a little bit behind the name. You know, data box oh. edge, you could mistakenly think that's a data box yeah. again. Right. And so I'm glad that uh, we get to talk about it because I feel like oh. there's a lot of opportunity and yeah. um, maybe just yeah. not a lot of awareness of it. Granted, right. it's only been around since March. It's not like we're dropping the ball, but at the same time, sometimes yeah. it's difficult right. to name products. Yeah, we're, we're, we're working on spreading the message. I mean, there it is. I am today. That's exactly that right now. <laughs> I also think a lot of these um, solutions sometimes they require different people in an organization to be yes. aware of it. You know, right. our audience is pr primarily developers and architects. That's right. And, their, their ears are going to prick up at this and turn around and say, hey, you know what? We've been wanting to experiment with uh, significant edge implementation, but the cost to get going is prohibitive. But here we are. We All of a sudden, we can spool up an R&D activity for three or four months. We mm -hmm. can jump on board with this. We can get this heavyweight appliance right. on site, and we can start leveraging it 
and it's not going to kill our capex as an example right. exactly. yeah that's exactly yeah. that's an important right. thing to point out yeah and and you asked about sort of what surprised us you know and i mentioned some about you know a lot more compute versus storage and that compute really from our preview and even our our ga customers now it's really been working with the developers in those organizations yeah much yeah. less you know your traditional iits or storage admins or anything it's really developers writing containerized code that want a way to push it out to the edge as you say and for our developers who want to know what it's like to interact with this, all they need to do is install IoT Edge, and they can mm -hmm. start interacting with what is exactly going to be on the yeah. data box edge as well. Oh. So they can they can do it today. They can create their own environment that's basically <laughs> the same. Well, yes. the crazy thing about IoT Edge is you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. Yes. Yeah, it's, light, <laughs> it, yeah. it's lightweight right. and heavyweight all at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> if you about, experiment. Talk yeah, about side experiment by side. Yeah, if you experiment with data box edge. Here, you edge how many <laughs> Raspberry Pis would it take to met? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be that you know you have both in your environment. You have your Raspberry Pis sitting out on your you know your robots, your manufacturing line, your oil rigs, or whatever, and then they're sending data back to DataBox Edge as sort of the aggregation point in the connection to the internet. It's processing across all those things in that local environment and then sending it on to the cloud. I go into my Azure portal. How do I find? The data box edge uh if you just search on the azure data box edge it will come up well, that, that, oh you search for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Easy I, as that, so i go to google.com and i'm looking for <laughs> how well, do I... <laughs> you can go to aka.ms slash data box dash edge and it will take you right to the landing page for ordering it ah brilliant brilliant That's and awesome it's, it's that easy. That easy it's it's that, that easy. easy can i and you i could use my msdn subscription credit uh, <laughs> and yeah, 150 <laughs> bucks offset on yeah, the 600. Yeah, you still, you got, you still got to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, actually, we don't allow MSDN subscriptions, unfortunately. Well, that's <laughs> understandable. Because we would, we would max out your subscriptions <laughs> pretty Yeah, quickly. that's right. Well, no, I was only joking. I don't want to use my MSDNs for that. I was just playing. Yeah. All right. So this is Databox Edge, a uh -huh. member of the family of all the data boxes. Yes. And the usage, use case would be. I would bring the edge down. I have compute locally. I would get uh, I would get storage uh, appliance for free with that. I mean, I say for free, but included as part of the solution. Yep. And I just slide it into my existing rack, and I'm ready to go. And I can have a disconnected solution if I need it to be. A, an occasionally connected probably is a better way to say it, as well as local compute to be able to handle all the devices I have to be able to either process them locally or filter all of the ingress that's going to to Azure. Yes. And when as you mentioned, you know, we do support um, both, you know, intermittently connected because you're occasionally your internet goes down, but you could also take it out in the field and have it fully disconnected. Or on a satellite link, we have a partially connected mode that you can configure it to where um, you can keep transferring data in and processing it, but it will, we won't try and transfer with a satellite link, but you can still manage. So the management channel is still available if you needed to do that. So, yeah. That's awesome. I like the product. I like the thing. I like the whole deal. I like Microsoft. <laughs> just throw that part in. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Andrew. I appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us about this. Sure. Thanks for having me.